everybody, Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's Tuesday here on this program, and you know what that means. We got Raw to talk about from Monday night, and uh, incredibly, I am here on video. If you guys had any idea how we barely make it on the air every single time we do this show. But anyway, here I am. Beautiful Cannon Beach, Oregon. Celebrating Tuesday here. The Raw Report is noted. And uh, a lot of other news as well. I wasn't here uh, yesterday. I presume Mike talked about everything. But if not, uh, we got plenty to talk about. Not the least of which is the... uh, Last note of the Raw show. Bruce Pritchard, now the interim head of talent relations for WWE. John Laurinaitis on administrative leave. Which uh, we figured would happen as a result of... The situation with Vince McMahon, the WWE board, etc. We've got uh, SmackDown ratings. We've got Rampage ratings. I will not talk for 30 minutes about uh, Rampage ratings, but we will discuss that here today. We've got uh, Forbidden Door. we got some new matches. Uh, not necessarily a new match, but a new participant. One of the matches we already know about. And uh, one of the matches that we were expecting... I don't think it's going to happen, so we'll tell you about that. We have also got the return of Kushida. We've got notes from WWE Main Event and and plenty more. Today, we'll take your feedback. If you'd like to contact us, 425-780-7566 is the phone number. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com, at Brian Alvarez on Twitter. And yes, everybody... F4W Online on Cameo. Have you gotten your Cameo? I'm doing them from the shores of the Pacific Ocean this week. Quite a deal for just uh, $35, so check it out. I'll be back in a moment with Semper Vivi and more Wrestling Observer Live. How'd it go yesterday? Need I ask? It went just fine, actually. What what disaster happened? Anything? No disasters. Really? Everything was perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Producer Dom was playing some some cookout music because of the the long weekend. It was a fantastic time that we had. He played cookout music. What does that yeah. even mean? Like there were sizzling steaks in the background. He actually surprised. He played the Gap Band's "Outstanding." You know, something you would hear at a picnic in the summertime. I, I guess not picnics with you because those. I guess what are those like? You just sit there and yell at everybody for, like, not pulling out the tablecloth correctly to, to lay on the ground. Yell at them for forgetting your, your steak. Here, they didn't uh, pack your steak. Jesus. I like how you Mike took the day off. You had no idea. Air. You didn't the even worst. tell anybody you were taking the day off to skip to the beach where people can now give you money for cameos. Bro, on Friday, I told you you had the show by yourself on Monday. I literally, the last why. segment of the show, I told you Monday was all yours. Didn't why does it why? matter? I was no, just well. Just, I I I came here. I did cameos. I worked hard here on quote vacation, all for you, the lovely listeners of Wrestling Observer Live. And I have news for you today, uh, yeah. listeners. If you uh, if you didn't miss if you didn't listen to Observer Radio last night or you didn't make it through thirty minutes on Rampage. I pointed out, so uh, Bruce Pritchard has been named interim head of talent relations of WWE as John Laurinaitis had been placed on administrative leave. PW Insider reported WWE issued a memo to talent, which is funny, actually, because you know who usually issues those memos to talent? John Laurinaitis. I don't think that he signed this one. Uh, They issued a memo to talent. Pritchard is a new head of talent relations going forward, quote, pending the conclusion of WWE's board of directors internal investigation. Laurinaitis has been placed on administrative leave. The memo additionally promises Pritchard would provide a, quote, seamless transition. I wonder what Pritchard would say if you asked him about that. Laurinaitis was not backstage at Raw. There, uh, him and Vince under investigation by the board over a $3 million hush money agreement by a former employee who allegedly had a sexual relationship with both men. McMahon voluntarily stepped down as CEO and chairman. I'm sure it was voluntary. Uh, while the investigation takes place, Stephanie's been named interim CEO and chairwoman, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, the point I made last night, which I can't help but... Uh, uh, repeat here on the show, and I hate repeating my material, but it, it ties into uh, ties into SmackDown actually. 
where uh, we had SummerSlam coming up, and SummerSlam was supposed to be Roman Reigns versus Randy Orton, by the way, who has been there for 20-something years. We just celebrated his 20th year. He was going to headline SummerSlam for the uh, title. So uh, it was going to be Randy Orton uh, versus Roman Reigns. Randy Orton needs back surgery. And so, uh, as a result, they did this uh, Matt Riddle match on SmackDown, which we can talk about later. And uh, and Roman Reigns won. Riddle can now not get another shot as long as Roman Reigns is champion. And since Randy Orton is out, well, who do we have to replace Randy Orton in a match with Roman Reigns at SummerSlam? Hmm. Well, uh, what preparations have we done? Who do we have ready? Well, there's Drew McIntyre, but he's already going to be at the uh, Castle show, the Clash at the Castle or whatever. So uh, with him, let's see. We got, uh, hmm. Uh, well, God damn, we got to go back to Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns for the seventh time on a major WWE pay-per-view because... We have nobody ready. Well, this reminds me of when Vince McMahon stepped down as chairman and CEO. Well, who do we have to replace Vince McMahon? Hmm. Who do we got ready to step in as chairman and CEO? Something were to happen to Vince McMahon. Uh, Let's see. Not Triple H. He's out of the picture. Um, You know what? Let's go with Stephanie, who we just buried... In a nationally published article. Uh, That's a great person. We we got a lot of, we really prepared for the, uh, you know, world beyond Vince. Let's bring back Stephanie. Now John Laurinaitis has to step away. Who do we have to step in as the head of talent relations? Well, uh, yeah, we fired that Carano guy. And, uh, yeah, you know what? Bruce Pritchard is now the head of talent relations. This company has zero ability to prepare for the future. They got nobody ready for anything. They got nobody ready for Laurinaitis to replace him. They got nobody ready to replace Vince McMahon. They got nobody ready to replace Roman Reigns. They got nothing except to go back to the same old, same old. So anyway, that to me is a takeaway from this Bruce Bruce Pritcher story. They just got nobody. They got nobody for any position. It's incredible. If anybody was listening to you right now that was a stockholder, you know, that would that would sound like a forward-looking thing that they would have problems, except anybody that's a stockholder, at least of major value and holds a major amount of stock, they seemingly don't care about any of that, Brian. And here's the thing with Vince. You can't actually replace him right now. Stephanie has right now because that's what he wants, the same way he wants Bruce Pritchard to assume Johnny Ace's role in the interim because he's comfortable with those people. But we have seen where Nick Khan and there are legitimate people on that board who have run legitimate industries that, you know, in theory can take over the corporate reins of that company. So you're right, you know, that they don't have people stacked. But in theory, there's the shakeup there. There there could be people in those positions. Those are corporate filled positions creatively creatively that's a little bit of a different story no charlotte now no cody no sasha no randy orton you have nobody else you go back to either who it's either lashley or it's mcintyre those two guys are tied up right now or it's brock lesnar and as soon as the news came out about randy orton It was just a matter of time, and they went and pulled that trigger on Friday, and that whole show worked for Vince, you know, with him starting it off, and then ultimately that getting the number that it did at the end and getting the retention that it did. Roman Reigns is a star. Brock Lesnar is about the only other star that you have. Let's see if they can ride that number and ride any excitement they can out of that, but for a lot of people, it is... It's better than a lot of other options, but man, you've seen this thing so many times. How exactly are you going to make this new? You know, maybe it'd be a good time to work on uh, grooming somebody to take over creative because, man, if something actually happened to Vince, like we replace Vince with a with a figurehead chairman and CEO, uh, which, by the way, somebody but asked Brian, me, remember when they had that yeah. uh, 
Hold on. Remember when they had that Iron Man match with the women? And, uh, you know, instead of calling it a, a Iron Woman match, they called it the Women's Iron Man match. Is she yes. the chairwoman or is she the women's chairman? I think that we need to get that clear. But anyway, so uh, she woman. is now in this this figurehead position, a figurehead position as the uh, chair, the women's chairman and uh, CEO of this company. Uh, uh-huh. But Vince is still doing all of his Vince stuff. So, yes. like, if something happened, if Vince went to the moon, uh, who is uh, Jeff Jarrett, uh, Bruce Pritchard? Are we going to bring back Eric Bischoff? Is Paul Heyman going to get a chance without Vince screwing everything up for him? Like, who well, do we have well, if something on, went down tomorrow? It depends on who lobbies best to whose ear. Because if there is a shakeup like that, obviously Kevin Dunn, Bruce Pritchard, that old guard is going to want to have some say. How strong is Triple H and any allegiances he has? Shawn Michaels, who's with him? Adam Pierce, is he related with someone? Because he could be a good booker or working as an assistant, a J.J. Dillon to somebody's Dusty. You know what I mean? As an assistant. So where does he lie? There are people that can take the throne. It's just going to be a matter of who's in charge, because if it's Stephanie, she may tend to rely maybe on the old guard but probably at her on her husband and whoever's actually you know affiliated with him that's who maybe who gets those those roles back in a moment everybody observer live that's a v for victory everybody the victory of all of those who got a cameo at f4w online film this week on the shores of the beautiful pacific ocean don't miss out everybody i got more news for you Let's make it quick. SmackDown, 2.29 million viewers on Fox. 0.57, 18 to 49. Showed it a huge number. And uh, as noted on the uh, show last night, the uh, Vince appearance did uh, 2.5 million viewers, which is very, very large, which you would expect given, like, every news show promoted that he would be on SmackDown. So we got a lot of free publicity. But uh, the main event with Riddle and Randy Orton 2.8 2.8 million viewers, which is sky high. And then if you watched Raw, you saw the follow-up to Riddle doing that sky high number. Rampage on Friday, in its normal time slot, 331,000 viewers and a .10. An appalling, horrible number. And uh, I think the, the uh, one-minute version of the 30-minute version to me is let's see what happens Wednesday and Friday and actually the following Wednesday and Friday as well because uh, based on game four of the Stanley Cup playoffs I don't think this Wednesday show is going to do very well and uh, I would not freak out yet but uh, I also wouldn't freak out too much now I guess that means I wouldn't freak out yet right but that's a horrible number dude that's a horrible number well yeah Wednesday's we've also got an update dynamite. on Jesus Christ <laughs> yes <laughs> Well, we got a delay, Mike, and so if I don't hear anything, I'm going to get talking. I don't know. Why don't you re- disconnect and reconnect and see if the the thing goes away? Can I just disconnect? Otherwise, we're going to be and talking over each other all go day. Do something else. God. Disconnect Jesus. and reconnect. We'll see if I it gets you. rid of this delay. God. It's not my fault. Not my fault. You hear? You hear him disconnect? He just disappeared into the ether. All right. Well, while he's uh, while he's reconnecting here. Let's talk about uh, Forbidden Door. So, this is not a spoiler because the match already took place, but Ishii has been added to the four-way for the AEW All-Atlantic title. So it'll be Miro versus Pac versus Ishii, and then the winner of Malachi Black and Penta. And I'm not saying it's a spoiler, but uh, the word is that Penta is not allowed to work this show, so that would uh, indicate that Malachi Black is going to be the fourth person. In that uh, in that, that All Atlantic Championship match, we have Moxie versus Tanahashi for the interim title. Jay White will be defending the title. It was announced today, as if we didn't know that already. But we don't know against who. It is to be determined, and uh, that would be on uh, Dynamite tomorrow. We'll find out who that's going to be. Thunder Rosa versus Tony Storm for the women's title. Will Ospreay versus Orange Cassidy. For the United States title, the uh, IWGP United States title, we've got winner take all for the Ring of Honor Tag Team titles and the IWGP Tag Team titles. FTR versus the Great Okan and Jeff Cobb versus Rapongi Vice. 
And uh, Chris Jericho, Minoru Suzuki, Sammy Guevara will face Eddie Kingston, Wheeler, Yuta, and Shota Amino. And the only other thing I want to say before we test Mike's delay is tomorrow on the show, they have announced that Brian Danielson is going to be there. And he is going to address Forbidden Door. And he is going to address Blood and Guts. And Brian Danielson has not been seen since the uh, Double or Nothing pay-per-view, where he suffered an injury in the uh, uh, ar- anarchy in the arena. I want to make sure, make sure I get that right. And he has not been seen since. We had, ar- ar- we had initially been told one to two weeks, and then uh, it was longer than that. And nobody will say what the injury is, but, uh, you know, I think we all know what it probably is. But it's not confirmed. But what I can tell you is that uh, even though they uh, were talking about Brian Danielson versus Zack Sabre Jr. on Rampage, which was taped last Wednesday, and even though he was announced for the show this coming Wednesday, the uh, impression that I was given as of today is that he is not cleared, and he might not be cleared for a while. And so... Uh, they, he could show up tomorrow when uh, they announce the match and he does it with Zack Sabre Jr. But at this point, I'm thinking that the match is not going to take place. And I'm also thinking that uh, he may not he may not be doing blood and guts. But that is not confirmed. So I guess we'll find out more when he does his promo. I think one way or the other we're going to know tomorrow when he does his promo. Mm-mm-mm. Thoughts on any of this, Mike? How's that delay? Uh. I don't know how the delay is, but I know this is not going to be good news for you. This is very bad news for you. You with your family out there on vacation. You ever see the movie Cape Fear, Brian? You ever see that movie? Yes. Man comes I up. I actually haven't, but I know of it. Tortures that man on uh, on vacation. And Zack Sabre Jr., not doing anything right now. Going to want to come to this country. And he may be on a plane right now, Brian. And if he finds out that Brian Danielson is unavailable for the beating and the stretching that he wants to lay out while he is in America, he may want something else to do. And who better than maybe pay a visit to the guy that called him chicken chest over all of those years? I would be uh, I would be uh, aware, Brian Alvarez. I would stay aware. Well, you know, Mike, you know, Mike, uh, first off, uh, I have not referred to him as Chicken Chest in quite a while because mm. he, he took my advice and, uh-huh. uh, and did oh. some push-ups. Uh-huh. Yeah. But I am not going to be, I will not be in the area for that pay-per-view, but do you know who will be across the street from Ooh. the Forbidden Door pay-per-view? Our own filthy Tom Lawler, former New Japan Strong Openweight Champion, competing in the G1 this year. And I can't think of a better match than Zack Sabre Jr. versus filthy Tom Lawler on Forbidden Door. A much better match, I might add, than myself and Zack Sabre Jr. I like that. I, wouldn't I like, like that. I, I like that guy. much more than uh, the other one you were kicking around, which was, of course, filthy against Dr. Luther which I still don't know how that really is going to be something that people care about. But, you know, we are going to get... Well, if there's ever a match, if there's ever a match I want where I can get my revenge, it'll be against Dr. Luther. Well, how about against Toru Yano, who we're going to get, get to see Filthy against? Look at all of these dream matches that Filthy can knock out during this G1. In one hand, Kazuchika Okada, the greatest professional wrestler all time, all anybody's life right now, except if you're a Roman Reigns fan, it's Kazuchika Okada. And then on this other hand, Toru Yano. I mean, two fantasies come true if you're Filthy Tom, and he is going to spend his entire paycheck on nothing but Pride Never Die merchandise. He's going to come home looking like Generalissimo Takata. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah, I, uh, if you want to know, I asked Filthy Tom, the first thing I asked him, in fact, on the show after he did a bunch of lewd intros, was uh, <laughs> which match he was more excited to have the match with Okada or the match with Yano. And so if you want the answer, Filthy for Daily, which went up today. And uh, by the way, there will be uh, no Landstorm show today uh, because of travel issues. Lance will be up at 1030 Pacific, 130 Eastern on Wednesday. So that's when you can get all of uh, all of the Lance all of the Lance thoughts. By the way, also after this show today. We're live, pal! You know who's going to be live on We're Live, pal? Me! 
Who? Really? Me. Is there going to be yes. a delay? Uh, there is going to be a delay. So will you talk about something right now so I can try and fix this delay? Why don't you talk about your thoughts on Forbidden Door? I'll be right back. I love it. I love it. Anyway, yeah, I guess my thoughts on Forbidden Door. I haven't seen today's match between Clark Connors and uh, Tamir Ashii, which has now put Ashii in the All-Atlantic four-way that's going to be taking place. But that's going to be a great match. And I know yesterday I, I lamented the mat lack of singles matches, and I was curious as to what singles matches are going to be on this show. But that four-way with Pac involved is probably going to be pretty awesome. Uh Okada not being on the show, obviously Okada. disappointing. Y yes. Okada. Okada. What about Okada? I'm testing the delay. Ah. I'm testing the delay. Yeah. How is it? Yeah. Is there a knockout? Test. Test? Test. What? Can you hear me? I can hear you. When I say one, you say two. When I say <laughs> one, you say two. Get ready. All right. One. Two. Golly, that's still a long time. <laughs> ah, well, who cares? Keep going. Keep talking. How are you trying to fix this on the air right now, exactly? Like, you're just, like, mashing just some reconnected. buttons together? Okay. I reconnected. Yeah, it's the easiest oh, way to do it. Oh, my God. You know, we got a whole Raw review that we're supposed to be getting to here. Are we going to be doing that? Or well, are good. We you won't be... say anything during the Raw review. That'll make life a lot easier for me. Can I just tap out all together and just go get something to eat or drink now? You know, but can I do that? You know what that? I'm going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reconnect everything after this break. So we'll we'll solve that problem here in a moment. <laughs> but hey, Kushida is back, everybody. That's exciting. Kushida returned to New Japan. Yeah, he confronted uh, he confronted uh, Taiji Shimori. So that should be an exciting match, Kushida and Taiji Shimori. Shouldn't it, though? Uh, maybe hey, we can see a, that. Do you have a rosin bag actually like sitting next to you? Or do you have like some sort of like? Is there an actual Brian Alvarez kung fu grip that you actually have? I see you not, didn't. Uh, I see you didn't point out how nice this room looks now that we've totally remodeled it, and it no no longer looks like some, uh, you know. A cabin I've been relegated to. It looks beautiful. Actually, now, it looks it? exactly like a cabin you've been relegated to, like somewhere where, you know, look at all those like worked books. Like you've actually read any of those. You're just like hiding money. Well, those in are there my because... books. It's my, <laughs> it's my uh, father in law's books. <laughs> but seriously, now that you're just working the grip, like, I mean, are you worried? Are you going back and forth? Are you worried about having like one huge arm by the time like the week is over here? Like, what do you, would, would, like, I know how Dave does it because he's a maniac, but, like, how do you yeah, adjust? Yeah, Dave and Tom both do it. How do you adjust to I having hold on Because he's it. a maniac, too. Okay, get out of here. We're going to do Raw after the break. We're going to get the show back on the road. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Well, uh, we're back here on the show, and uh, thank goodness we just have to do the Raw report, where Mike doesn't have to say a lot. Because uh, for some reason, my internet is uh, bottom of the barrel right now. We usually get a thousand up and a thousand down, and uh, right now it's twelve up and one down. No, twelve down and one up. It's a miracle. And of course, when I send this. everything, wow. Yeah, I, have to, I send it with the upload, obviously. So uh, one up is uh, probably the reason for this delay right here, and I have no idea why it's so bad because it was blazing last night. Well, let me get this raw report done, Mike, and then I'll shut up and you can talk about it, and we'll try not to actually talk to each other today. That might make life easy. So uh, the show opened up with Bianca coming out, and she announced that uh, Rhea Ripley, who she was supposed to be facing at the pay-per-view, will not be medically cleared in time for the pay-per-view. So I don't know what that means. Other than she won't be medically cleared in time for the pay-per-view. But they had no other information. They had no nothing. And uh, I, I absolutely am not reporting that it is a concussion. But I can say that normally when they won't tell you what it is, that's usually what it is. But it could be anything. But she's off the show. So as a result, they did the only, literally the only thing that they know how to do when they need a challenger for a women's belt. And that is... A multi-woman match. This, I believe, is the fifth time in a row that they have needed a challenger for a women's title, and they have just done a random multi-person match to determine who is going to be in it. So it ended up with Carmella, Liv Morgan, Asuka, Becky Lynch, and Alexa. Last week, they announced that Asuka and Becky would be in a qualifier for the Money in the Bank ladder match. We announced it, uh, I think Mike probably ran it down yesterday on the show because it was one of the only two things announced for Raw 
was uh, Becky Lynch versus Asuka in a qualifier. But they just end up in this match right here. So uh, Becky has the win, but uh, you know how it is in these multi-person matches. Carmella hits a super kick out of nowhere, and uh, Carmella wins. And so it is Bianca versus Carmella for the title at the pay-per-view. The last time we saw Carmella in a match, it was the second night of WrestleMania. And then her only other appearance was doing like some... uh, uh, 24-7 gimmick backstage where uh, she was, you know, doing something with truth of all people. But now she's back and in the championship picture. Then, this is the best part of the show. Becky goes up to Adam Pierce, and Becky says, I was screwed out of that match. I should be in Money in the Bank. Adam Pearson says, well, you know, let's do a match between you and Asuka. And the winner of that match will be uh, entered into Money in the Bank. And Becky says, that's great. And then Adam Pierce goes, and that match will be tonight. And Becky's all angry and furious. So literally, they announced a match a week in advance. And then the night of the show, they shot the angle for the match where the participants pretended that they didn't know that they were going to be in the match on this show. That's a new one. We had a Roman Reigns Riddle recap. Riddle then came out and did this promo, and uh, he talked about how he'd let down Randy, he'd let down himself, he'd let down the fans, the whole nine yards, and uh, he is now going to be in a Money in the Bank qualifying match against Omos. Now, for those of you that have not listened to any of the shows over the last couple of days, the quick and dirty here is that Matt Riddle and Roman Reigns did 2.8 million viewers for their match on SmackDown. The highest rated thing on the show at 9.40 in the evening, like 20 minutes before Rampage started, where Rampage did a horrible number. 2.8 million viewers. He can no longer challenge for the title. He literally says in his promo, I cannot challenge for the title again unless I win Money in the Bank. If I win Money in the Bank, I can cash in on Roman Reigns. They have a built-in storyline here. It's a, you know, it's a killing a stipulation, but it's still a built-in WWE storyline. He did a huge number with Roman Reigns. And what do they do after all that? Well, he gets in the ring with Omos. He is squashed for three minutes and 54 seconds. He is tree slammed. He is pinned in the middle of the ring. He is tree slammed again afterwards. Seth Rollins then dances down to the ring, and he lays out Riddle with a curb stomp. You couldn't have made Riddle into a bigger geek coming off that match with Roman Reigns than they did here. And that's the follow-up to that match on SmackDown that did such a great number. Theory does a segment. He's uh, bearing John Cena, so clearly it's going to probably be John Cena versus uh, Theory. I presume it's SummerSlam. And uh, Lashley shows up behind him. In fact, I know it's SummerSlam because it's going to be Lashley versus Theory at uh, Money in the Bank. Lashley shows up, sprays him with uh, baby oil. Uh, Theory's upset. He goes backstage. He says, listen, I will give Lashley a shot at this United States title if... He can win a three-man gauntlet tonight against three mystery opponents. We had Angelo Dawkins versus Jey Uso. I made a bet with Mike, I believe, for $5. I don't actually know if he even accepted the bet, but I know other people had uh, accepted the bet. I was sure that Angelo Dawkins was going to lose to Jey Uso on this show tonight. It makes no sense for him to do so, but you know what? This show doesn't make any sense. I was sure... That he was going to lose. And in fact, Angelo Dawkins beat Jey Uso. So there you go. Seven minute match. It was, uh, it was fine. Then we had the best thing on the show. There's a couch backstage. And sitting on the couch playing his guitar is Elias. And in walks Ezekiel. And he sits down on the other side of the couch. And these two men have a discussion. And they actually did an incredible job 
with whatever special effects they did to uh, get both of these guys on the couch with each other. Because it's not even like, like I'm old. So like in the old days, you would have to have like a static shot and then you'd film one guy's th- thing and then you'd film the other guy's thing and then you'd, you know, put the two static shots together to make them look like they're talking to each other. This was a shot where they're slowly zooming in on both of these guys. So, you know, technology is is significantly better nowadays than it was when I was, uh, you know, doing uh, video production in 1993. But anyway, they're both sitting there talking, and then at the end they actually do a fist bump, and uh, and then they go to the ring, and there's Elias in the ring for his concert. And he's about to do his concert, and Kevin Owens interrupts, By the way, no notes on this. I just remember all of this. Kevin Owens comes out and he goes, dude, this is, I'm not going to stand for this. This is ridiculous. I'm not falling for that thing on the couch. That's movie magic. This is ridiculous. He goes in the ring. They have a quick kerfluffle. Somehow uh, the beer doesn't fall off. Uh, Elias gives him the jumping knee, hits him with the gimmick guitar, lays him out. Kevin Owens goes backstage. He's so furious. He's angry. He's cutting this promo backstage. He goes, I'll face I, I'll face Elias. I'll face Ezekiel. Dude, I'd face their uh, their other brother, Elrond, I believe was his name. And as he's doing this promo, up walks Ezekiel. And Kevin Owens can't believe his eyes. And he starts pulling his hair out. And he's, start, he's I keep thinking Elrond because uh, it's a long story. I still get Scientology stuff in the mail. This is just, but this is not something I want to talk about on the air. That that lead me down. That lead me down a a a, a wrong path. But anyway, he's going to face one of these geeks next week on the show. And uh, listen, I thought that when they did this whole thing, we'd get one moment where during a match with uh, with Ezekiel, Kevin Owens would go backstage. Elias would hit him with the guitar, and that would be the payoff. Bro, this is one of those rare examples in WWE where what they did is miles better than what I expected. This has gone from something that was so horrible to easily, easily the best thing on this show. So next week, Kevin Owens versus uh, L. Ron Hubbard. If L. Ron loses, he must give up Scientology. If he wins, Kevin Owens must become a Scientologist. That's actually not the uh, that's not the idea, but I think it's pretty good. Bobby Lashley in a gauntlet no. match. He no. beats Chad Gable. He beats Chad Gable in six minutes. Then he goes uh, eight minutes with Otis, but then uh, Chad Gable runs in for the DQ. They beat the guy down. They leave him for dead. Obviously, the last guy is is Theory. He gets in there. He beats on Lashley for two minutes. He goes for his finish. And, bro, the, the cradle that Lashley did off this finish was so awesome. And he pins Theory, and it is now going to be Lashley versus Theory for the U.S. title at Money in the Bank. We had a Miz TV with AJ Styles. Just a bit as AJ Styles says, you're just trying to make me mad. I'm not going to snap. Then he snaps, beats up Miz, gets jumped by Ciampa. They have a four-minute match. Four minutes is as good as you're going to get in four minutes. AJ beats him with a phenomenal forearm, and then Miz tries to hit the ring. And in his suit, AJ Styles lays out Miz with the Styles clash. So apparently it's going to be Miz against AJ Styles. What ifs? Veer Mahan promo, nothing but what chance. He's trying to get over his catchphrase, fear Veer. I don't picture that one getting over all that big. And then the main event, Money in the Bank qualifying match, Oscar versus Becky Lynch, 12 minutes. They had a really, really good 12-minute match. Great wrestling. Asuka boots her in the head, pins her, clean in the middle of the ring. There's no interference. There's no distraction. The better woman won. Asuka is in Money in the Bank. Becky Lynch is freaking out. I don't know where it's going, but at least it's something they're doing with Becky Lynch. Ultimately, she's going to win the title to do the match with uh, Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania, but that's a long time from now. So they can they can take their time with this one. And uh, that was the show. One of those rare shows where I expect the third hour to die. But, dude, that third hour was the best hour of the show by miles. And I didn't even mention 
the uh, Vince McMahon cameo where he strutted down to the ring, tried to get into the ring, almost fell down, then had to do a silly jump to show that he was agile, but he can only jump off one leg and not both of them. And then he does a quick promo about John Cena, tries to get out of the ring, and then he almost falls down again, and so he wants to show his agility by jumping off the second ring step, which they cut away from as quickly as possible in case he, like, exploded into debris. (laughs) This bloke's out of his mind. Yes, he Any is. Any thoughts, Mike? Well, when is Charlotte scheduled to come back? Because there's two spots open in both the men's and the women's ladder matches, and we got Aaliyah and Shotzi are going to fill one spot, but we still have two more remaining. Like, you're at a lack of talent right now, and Lacey's back, she's in there, and Carmella's getting a title shot, so she's out of the way. I mean, could Dana Brooke get in there? Because now that Dewdrop has got the 24-7 title, like, I mean, is Dana Brooke going to get her? That's as close as she can get to a gold watch in that company is being allowed to perform. (laughs) Dana? Money in the bank ladder match? Well, but Nikki Ash is in the same spot. I can see her chasing around Dewdrop. You know who should be, Mike? Who, Who should it be, Brian? After a long, awkward, delayed pause... Yes. Why it should be Bailey. <clears throat> Pam? Really? Are we going to get Bailey back? Oh, it's time. I'd be happy she with that. She should be back anytime, dude. It's been over a year. It's been plenty of time. I'm good with it. Good with it. What about the dudes? Got to put Bailey in there. What about the dudes? Are there more spots for the dudes? I'm not even paying attention to Money in the Bank. I just did a full Raw review. I couldn't tell you half the people that are in this Money in the Bank ladder match. Maybe I'll do that after the break since we got a delay. Back in a moment, Observer Live. I hope this is not one of those deals where, like, during busy periods, they're going to slow this internet every day. Like, every day at noon, it's going to be slow. That would be brutal Mm. for this program, but I'm going to do my best. But here is the Money in the Bank, for those of you that are unaware. Bianca Belair versus Carmella for the Raw Women's title. Ronda Rousey versus Natty for the SmackDown Women's title. The Usos versus the Street Profits for the undisputed WWE Tag Team titles. Theory versus Bobby Lashley for the U.S. title. And the Money in the Bank ladder matches, everybody. On the men's side, we have Seth Rollins. I refuse to call him Seth freaking Rollins, which everybody has to anytime they mention his name on WWE, which is one of those things that drives me mad. Sheamus, Drew McIntyre, Omos, Shinsuke Nakamura, Sami Zayn, and three men to be announced. And then for the women, we have Lacey Evans, Alexa Bliss, Liv Morgan, Raquel Rodriguez, Asuka, the winner of Ali and Shotzi, and then two more participants to be determined, Mike. Yes, I believe it's only two two men that are going to be remaining after Sami Zayn, but uh, Riddick Moss, do you reward him with something like that, put him in that type of match? Balor no, according Priest? to this, according to this, Is it three? it's the winner of Nakamura and Zayn and three oh. others after that. Good Lord. Good Lord. Well. Yeah, you know, you maybe. could actually just do a Money in the Bank match with less people. That'd probably be you, the easiest solution here, wouldn't it? You, you, you could, but uh, Corbin and McAfee, that's the one I'm most looking forward to on that show. All right, everybody, we're out of time. want to thank you all for listening today. Apologize for any technical difficulties. Hopefully those will be fixed by tomorrow. Mike, as always, callers and listeners, switch homies, everybody in the studio. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.